Hi, everyone. Welcome to TTFF 2020 industry events. And thanks so much for joining us. This year, our full film program will be screened online from September 9th to 15th with our new media exhibition installed at Medulla Art Gallery in Woodbrook, Port of Spain. If you're joining us via Facebook Live, please feel free to post all your questions in the comments section below and we'll address them during the session. Don't forget, you can check out our full film listing and pay for film bundles at online.ttfilmfestival.com. We'd like to thank all our TTFF 2020 sponsors and partners. TTFF 2020 is given leading sponsorship by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, contributing sponsorship by Republic Bank Limited, with Shell Trinidad and Tobago Limited supporting TTFF 2020 online industry events. Okay, great. So, so happy to have everyone on. And today we have with us Julio Gobetti and Jan Stockel. Hi, guys. We also Good. have, hi. We also have Vanessa and Jeremy. Hi guys, joining uh, us. Hello, hello, we're so happy to be here. Great, you also have Dylan, hello. Hi guys. Hi. And we are now joining, being joined by Gus Bergonzoli. Right, hi, hi to you, all of you. And I just wanna say thank you to our filmmakers for participating in our film festival and thank you guys so much for joining us online today so we can have pick your brains a little bit about your film so first up i want to start with uh regeneration so dylan hi how are you doing today i'm good thanks for having me all right so you want to tell us the inspiration behind your film regeneration how did you think about starting it why did you make that film so inspiration for regeneration came a very long time ago back in 2014 some friends and i um, founded a non-for-profit organization that was aimed at sparking positive social and environmental change and um regenerating quarries has always been a big thing on my list from driving to toko regularly to, um, we would make trips every summer and the quarries are very evident on the side of the road. You know, they're not even hidden away. They're literally on the side of the road. Um, so fast forward to 2018, we got the opportunity to partner with National Quarries. Thanks so much to them. And we kicked off the National Day of Caring in 2018. And since then, I've just documented the process. Great, great. And so what was the process like making this film? How long did it, it take you to make it? So from the National Day of Caring in 2018, um, May of 2018 till the final cut, it was just over two years. I got the final in at the end of last year. Um, and it was, it was interesting. It was long, you know, like, you, you go and you visit the quarry once a week, twice a week sometimes. And then after I got all of the um, sessions in, um, we chose the various people that we wanted to interview. And after that, you know, you sit down on the timeline and I wrote it on the timeline essentially. And it, it's really quite special to do it that way because the people that you interview in a sense um, write the story they write their own story. At least that's how I felt. And I just pieced the conversations together. And yeah, I mean, based on the conversations, I just used whatever footage that I had that was relevant and then further designed any other supporting footage that I needed. But it, it took around two years to make. So um, it was a long process and I'm happy that it's, the documentary part is over, but there's still work to be done on the ground. Definitely. And one of the things that we um, notice about the films that we are talking about today, it's a lot 
of environmental films and a lot of films that call us to action. Yes. So that's one of the things you look forward to when we um, make films such as these that the audience will get involved and participate. So thank you so much for making that film. And I was really excited to see that film and many of the films in this bundle today because um, one of the films from St. Vincent and Grenadines actually talks about many of the um, issues that he dealt with in regeneration. So thanks a lot. Uh, we move on to Jan and Julio for your film, <laughs> No Island Like Home. Hi, hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Hi. So tell us, why did you want to make this film? How did you come about to make this film? Okay. Shall I go, Jan? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always difficult to understand who's going to answer the question <laughs> between us. Um, so it all started with a friend of mine uh, that um, uh, was living in Montserrat at the time. And uh, Jan and I um, were, were hearing from this friend of mine who was working on the island. And he was telling us a lot of stories about this place and how um, you know, like a lot of fascinating stories, not really about the volcanic eruption per se, because the, our film is not really about that, uh, but about people uh, 20 years on, 22 years on, surviving and trying to make, uh, trying to uh, live on an island that has some problems because of the economical impact that this volcano had. And we, we were just really fascinated by some of the stories and we, we, uh, he had some contacts that we talked to and uh, everyone was really, like, really interesting. So we decided to kind of uh, uh, take a plane and go and uh, see what we could do. And uh, we were completely fascinated by the place and uh, the film was born. It was meant to be much shorter than it ended up being. Um, but uh, yeah. eventually we were too, uh, it was, there was too much uh, that we wanted to put in that we kind of pushed, it, pushed the boundaries a little bit more, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to add, Jan? Yeah, well, no, as, as Julia said, you know, we basically fell in love with the island and, and the people and there. And so there are so many stories to tell on Montserrat and uh, it was quite tricky actually to, you know, pinpoint it down to <laughs> to to a 45 minutes film actually yeah, yeah where the volcano is a protagonist in a sense but 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 more the people actually yeah the volcano is there but it's much more about about the people of Montserrat yeah we, we always wanted to make a film that not, was not about the tragedy but uh, was more about the reaction uh, was more about how people uh, the strength of the people that uh, reacted to this volcano in terms of uh, adapting and in terms of innovating and in terms of changing. So there's a lot of uh, that that is interwoven uh, within the film. Great. So, I mean, I saw a lot about the life. I saw where, where you all wanted to show life on Montserrat and I saw a lot about the life. We even saw the festival. So how long did you stay there to get involved in the culture of the, of the people to be able to film all these scenes? Yeah, it was about, about a month actually, but quite an intense month. Like we, <laughs> we were around every day, you know, like we, we met quite uh, different people in a sense and like, so different realities of the island. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was a really long month, in a sense, <laughs> like, uh, an, an exciting month. And then yeah. for us, I think what was really surprising for what, you know, we're, we're based in the UK and we used to film around here. And what was really surprising about Montserrat is how once we were there, it was really easy to find people that would tell us, oh, you know, come and see this. This is absolutely amazing. This is really interesting. It introduced us to like a lot of interesting people. And for us, it was... You know, it was just uh, quite overwhelming, but at the same time, uh, absolutely amazing because you, you never have um, so many people willing to show you around and, you know, really pr they're really proud of their island and, and rightly so. And so it, it's, they went, really wanted to, us to, to see the most of it and to make the most of it. And I think that um, 
it, it, it was really an amazing time. And then we went back uh, this year in March trying to do a premiere that unfortunately was cancelled because of the pandemic. But uh, because now we make quite a few friends <laughs> and we, it's always nice to go back. Definitely. I can just imagine. So we do have a, a question here and it says, uh, what was the process of filming there like? It's hard to imagine what life there is. And that's from Mariel Brown. So what yeah. was the process? Yeah. I mean, the process um, was very, very organic, to be honest. It was um, very much about, we had a few, a couple of names at the beginning um, of people that we wanted to talk to. Um, they were um, our landlady, really, and uh, uh, a, a music teacher, because my friend was working there as a music teacher. And, and then from then, it was, it was really very organic, and we were just around with the camera, like, you know, 10, uh, 11 hours a day, um, just, you know, going in, direct, in the direction that we were pointed at, really. And, you know, they introduced us to these characters, so we just follow them and see whether it brings anywhere. And it wasn't very structured in the terms of, like, we weren't trying to force a story onto it. It was more uh, trying to find out what this island wanted to tell us and kind of try to represent that in the best possible way. And what we try to do is that give an idea of the kind of different people that you meet on the island. You know, there's very different, very different people that on an island of 5,000 people strong that don't even uh, cross paths that often between themselves. So we kind of wanted to give a wide representation of what the island brings really. Yeah, it was quite incredible how, you know, one, uh, in a sense, what one character brought to the other, you know, like, um, it's, it's, it's amazing how, yeah, one situation brought to the other and, and we could meet so many people in, in that time. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was a whole different story. <laughs> the editing was way more complicated because of that, but that's another yeah. story. Yeah. I can just imagine. Thank you guys so much for that insight. I mean, living in the Caribbean, we didn't really, you know, there's so many things we don't even know about ourselves. So we thank you so much for that film. Um, next, we want to move on to our own house and we have Vanessa and Jeremy. Hi guys. Hi. 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 Hey, so tell me a little bit about how did you come to make this film in Belize <laughs> of all places, yeah? Sure, sure. It's interesting. There's a lot of similarities between Our Own House, which is our film shot in Punta Gorda in Belize, in the southernmost tip of Belize. And with what Julio and Jan were sharing about their, their film, it all started with us getting on a plane. A lot of people go to Belize to enjoy the beautiful country and the beautiful nature and the beautiful people, but not a lot of people end up going to these very remote places like PG. And a friend of ours, um, who is actually our co-director, who isn't here right now, Tyler Robinson, he had been going down to Punta Gorda for many, many years and loves it. Like he knows it like the back of his hand. And he was um, very concerned about the mounting trash problem that he that he was seeing around and Jeremy and I joined him um, for a scout and uh, much like also what what um, Julia was saying before we wanted to focus not on 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 you know the tragedy that is becoming plastic pollution around the world it's not it's not um, a problem that is specific to Belize it is um, a mounting problem around the world for all of us and we actually named the film our own house because even though we get a little window into this beautiful paradise um, that is coming to grips with the reality of, of managing plastic waste um, it is really about our own house wherever you know like the people on facebook right now we're on this that are watching our q a like no matter where you are um, the goal for our film was for you to watch the film and and then question what your own relationship to plastic pollution is in your own house um 
I mean, we can go, we can go on about, I know Jeremy, Jeremy and I had both been making um, films, uh, social issue films. Jeremy made a, an amazing environmental film before this one that we made together. And um, the stats that, that we learned um, through making this film are really, you know, of concern to, to us and, and should be of concern to us. Um, Jeremy, do you want to do you want to jump into some of that? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what's really interesting about Punta Gorda is that it's a town of only three, four thousand people, and yet it's sort of a microcosm of all the issues that we're dealing with with plastics. In the sense that there's no recycling; it's such a remote place. Um, the dump was uh, such an issue where it was basically just a, you know, cut down field in the jungle uh, where people were burning trash. And so the, the film sort of looks at that kind of like implication of how a community um, and activists uh, in the community start to piece together how to, to figure out solutions to this when it's like you can't rely on thinking that, oh, we'll have the technology or we'll have recycling. And especially considering that you know, plastics basically aren't really recycled even in the United States or European countries with very elaborate uh, recycling systems. And so, you know, the film looks at these activists and sort of starting these small kind of neighbor or block by block sort of initiatives and then sort of thinking bigger about how they can impact um, change in Belize and talking about this plastic uh, ban that they're trying to implement. And we hope that the film can help kind of educate people around this uh, plastic ban that has still actually been sort of pushed off. And so that's why we're hoping to kind of keep pushing within uh, Belize itself to make sure everybody talks about this issue because the, the single use plastic ban on utensils, plastic bottles, plastic bags, has not been instituted yet. And um, so the film kind of looks at the start of that, but you know, since we finished the film um, and over a year ago, the, the ban still hasn't been implemented yet. And that said, Belize is really taking first steps into, into implementing uh, bands that we all, no matter what countries we are in, right, have to start taking very, very seriously. It's, it's a reality that across the world, there's, you know, 375 tons of plastic made each year. Um, and 91% of the plastic is not recycled around the world. So um, it's, it's something that um, Belize is, is, is and, and people in PGR, the activists in our film are taking into their own hands, but it does bring the question of, you know, disaster response being being put in the hands of individuals, right? Disaster response like man-made disasters or, you know, like all the situations that we're, we're facing or we're seeing around the world in the media, whether it's um, an accident in a, in a, you know, with containers at sea or whether it's plastic pollution that um, places like PG are not responsible for manufacturing and that's one of the biggest issues of, of the town that we grew to love so much is that they really are not used they're not making plastic products they're all coming to them um, from manufacturing yeah. and we could all kind of feel like in the same shoes right like we are, we're all buying things that are available in the supermarket and we're, yes, we're yes. getting very used to just having those things in our lives. But um, the reality is that we have to start um, looking at our relationship with plastic and also questioning how much of it is an individual responsibility, like the activists in our film, and how much of it really we need, you know, to, to get the help of, of people in government and people across, across okay. borders and across nations to come around to the idea that we're, we're, we're not living in a very sustainable way and that has real consequences. Yes, thank you so much. And we are nearly out of time, so we just want to have some final words here. Um, thank you, Vanessa. And Dylan, your film uh, dealt with some of the same issues that we may have been facing in Point Punta Gorda. So um, is there anything that you would want to 
um, message that you would want to leave or to see, especially with your film? Um, I, I would just say two quick things. Um, in terms of the reforestation of the quarry, and I think it's applicable to a lot of other problems, is the solution that yielded the best results was quite simple. And that was just the redirection of organic waste to the quarry. And I think it's relatable because a lot of the time solutions to problems are a lot easier than you might think. And people overthink problems a lot. Um, and the second thing I wanted to say is what really made that program so successful is the integration of the people from Sangu Grandi and the environs because it's so easy to import labor from neighboring communities. But when you get the people from that community involved, the results are exponentially positive because they have that okay. worth of being from the community and they can now educate their family members, their neighbors, and it really goes along. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.